Yes. Welcome, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yes, sir. OK, good. So um, there is a chapter. Or actually, a paper or four. I will upload the uh, videos. Uh, I'll upload the papers. I think I must have already applied, uh, uploaded. Please check in the paper and also its supplementary material, which you should uh, try to read. I will try to post a. a, a a video or in the class, and then um, we will finish after as well. And that is this now. So we're uh, transgenic mice that you may have uh, discussed. Question for uh, binding cell biology. I hope so. And uh, biotechnology people must have read this in a genetic engineering course. So, but try to get into the um, critical details of it. Don't be superficial about it. Okay. So, t mostly, uh, most of the uh, research and everything is done on mice. So, we don't have to learn this now, but it's all right to do because it, they're small, easy to handle. There, in, uh, in four to six weeks, they become active sexually, and then they can reproduce as well. And they are very much similar. Their biology is very much similar, not identical, similar to our uh, our biology. So, it's a it's good uh, model organism to study. So. In majority of the cases, we study transgenic animals. Uh, it's about constructing what is it thing we probably describe what is a transgene. So from outside, that is exogenous. And A, B, C, and E. If you take any other gene from outside and put it in into the genome of this organism, then that is that gene is transgene, right? Exogenous gene that is not identical to the genes that are present, all that are already present in the organism. And but having said this, there is also another place. Another place. say, if you take an I, a gene A and put here through homologous recombination. Is there any change in the organism? No change. Because you just put in something that's already existing and at the same location. But if I take a, G, a, a gene A and put it in some other location, now this organism has two copies of A. And there could be some change. Right? Then again, that is a kind of uh, thing you, one has to uh, remember. Uh, what do you mean by transgene? Typically, what it means is it's a gene from a different organism. It, uh, whether it is the same species or not, again, it could vary. Okay, if it is the same, it's the identical gene, then it's tip, it, you don't call it as a trans. It's a it's the same genetic information. There would not be any resultant uh, any change in that. So. Uh, foreign genetic elements that are usually not identical. That's what you should remember. Okay, and the when you call something as transgenic animals, so when you say uh, transgenic animals, there is little more to it in the sense that if you if there is an organism and you introduced uh, something into the tail, you into the cells of the tail, you introduce a gene. It's not going to affect the gamete, uh, the gonads of it, or 
the other other parts of the cell, other uh, of the body. Usually, it would mean that it the genetic element should have been in all the cells, okay, and that would be the transgenic animal, including the germline, including the gonads. So that the transgene is inherited by the progeny of this. Uh, this mouse okay so uh, try to remember that I hope you also uh, did we discuss about chimera what is a chimera did we discuss this or uh, we didn't someone can answer Mm, I hope not in this class. So, anyway, so when we are reading about transgenic uh, animals, I would want you to remember several things um, about the design of the gene construct, the mechanisms that we put into the uh, put the gene construct into the cells, how we transfer it to surrogate mother, and then screening mechanisms for. Uh, transgenic animals, then profiling of the expression patterns, whether the gene is expressed or not, and so on, and then the what characteristics it is resulting in. Yeah. So, in the in terms of a, a overview, um, there are at least two methods of making transgenic animals. One is direct microinjection method and the other one is engineered uh, stem cell method. This would be our focus um, because it is also very interesting. It is also very efficient and much more controlled. But otherwise, um, um, that we, we will uh, see this DNA microinjection is here. That is one of the techniques. You take a fertilized egg I'm trying to now describe the 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 outline of uh, transgenic animals, so that we can uh, see uh, what is there. So, as I said, DNA direct uh, direct micro inject micro injection is this: you take a fertilized egg, you put in the gene construct in there, and then let it grow into the blastocyst and and then embryonic development. That is much more simple, straightforward. But it is not so much in control. We cannot control it as much. The second one method is to take embryonic stem cells. I hope you remember where we get embryonic stem cells. We get from ICM, that is inner cell mass. And this. I ICM is uh, coming from blastocyst. This part of it is called the ICM. Okay, and uh, it is it blastocyst. Um, okay, I will try to give you an introduction for those who may not have taken stem cell biology before. Uh, there is an egg and a sperm, and fertilization happens, and that is how not a zygote forms. That is the fertilized egg. It will multiply and uh, several cleavages happens. Cleavages here would mean cell divisions. And you once you will have a cell, a ball of cells, each of them identical to the others. That stage is called as marula. And that marula will now form blastocyst. Blastocyst is the first time it, there is a differentiation. What is differentiation? If there is a cell and it gives rise to two different types of, I mean, cells that do not resemble the parent cell. This is the parent cell, assume. Okay. And these are the daughter cells. The daughter cells are not resembling the parent, right? They have different morphology and probably functions as well. That process is called as differentiation, right? So this is the first time uh, in blastocyst. That's the first differentiation. You there is there are two different types of cells. Compare that with that of Marula. In Marula, the, all the cells are of the same size, same type. 
they, there is no difference between each of them, uh, between, among them. Whereas in the blastocyst, there are two types of cells. The outer outer one is called as trophoectoderm, and the inner one is called as the ICM. ICM is the source of all the tissues that we have in our body now. Everything that we have in our body is derived from ICM. And that's why, I mean, when you culture them outside, that is what will give rise to embryonic stem cells. Okay? Because ICM can give rise to every tissue part in our body or tissue type in our body, they are called as pluripotent. Okay, pluripotent is the ability of one, of a cell to give rise to all the cells an adult uh, uh, has. So that's called pluripotency. The ability to give rise to a complete organism is called as totipotency. Totipotency is complete potency, you can say. That is the ability to give rise to a complete organism. Giving rise to different cell types is not giving rise to complete organism, right? There is a difference in that. Uh, as we know, the zygote is totipotent, whereas the ICM is pluripotent. And embryonic stem cells in normal tissues, during its growth, it will grow into different adult stem cells. I mean, it will give rise to ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm and then eventually different adult stem cells. And those adult stem cells will keep replenishing the body of any cell types that were that are uh, getting worn out and so on. So um, what we so what we are going to do for uh, the second type of transgenic mice or uh, gene therapy also is using this is called engineered embryonic stem cell method. That means we take ICM or the embryonic stem cells and then we do the manipulation in it and then we make the cells in there and we put it into uh, the blastocyst. We will get to how all these things happen. Okay. So, but I hope you understood, you got the general idea of it. All right, now we will see uh, direct microinjection method and engineered stem cell method. And eventually we will see, uh, this will also, as I said, will be useful for, um, the terminology will be useful for understanding um, gene therapy and other things. So the first one is very simple what you do uh, is uh, this is the one that we are trying to or this is also an overview of it um, you take the direct dna transfer method you take the desired gene with a vector so you may have a viral vector or any of it you have the gene of interest on it and then you typically put it into one of the pronucleus what is a pronucleus there is this egg and uh, Egg is still undergoing meiosis too. Okay, only upon fertilization by a sperm, um, the meiosis two of egg is completed, and this all thing will be excluded out as the second polar body, and then the genome one of it will become the female pronucleus, and the DNA or the genome set from the sperm, when it is injected, it will form one pronucleus that is called the male pronucleus. That of the egg is called as the female pronucleus. Later, uh, later on, these two nuclei will fuse and will form one nucleus. So the time between fertilization to the formation of this complete nucleus, these the the genome sets of uh, female and male, they exist independently like this. And during that stage, it is called as uh, pronucleus. Okay, the plural is pronuclei. So the desired gene is introduced into the vector, uh, sorry, through with the vector, it is introduced into the uh, location of the male pronucleus, typically. 
and then it is implanted into the uterus of a surrogate mother or a foster mother and then you allow the pups to uh, you allow the surrogate mother to give birth and then you test the offspring for the presence of the gene i think you can recollect what tests can be used to ascertain if the gene or transgene is present or not you can do one can do uh, based on what kind of gene you're putting you may also have a reporter gene such as say for example gfp that's a popular one um, that we all know of green fluorescent protein we can also employ molecular techniques something like southern blotting right we know the sequence of the gene so we can always make a probe of it and then perform southern blotting to find it out we can also do uh, pcr based tests because we know uh, the gene of interest whether it will give a product or not so there can be many other types of uh, tests that can be do uh, that can be done to to characterize if a particular pup is transgenic or not again uh, before going further we should understand why would this give rise to a uh, how can this be a transgenic by definition when we said about a transgenic all the cells of the body should have be have the gene of interest or the gene that we have put or the transgene because we are putting it into a nucleus uh, into the egg cell fertilized upon zygote okay that zygote will give rise to morula that morula will give rise to blastocyst with the icm from the icm we will it will grow rise to into primordial germ layers that, that is ectoderm and endoderm and mesoderm and then the whole organism right so all the cells of this individual is derived from this zygote that is the manipulated zygote therefore all the cells would have had the transgene and therefore this organism would have been the is can be called as transgenic okay so and uh, there is one more issue that we have put a desired gene of interest into one of the uh, say male pronucleus the female pronucleus so it has not received anything so it is still um, not homozygous right once we have identified from this the generation that we found at least one copy is present we should find multiple pups like that with which are transgenic but not homozygous they cannot be homozygous at this stage and interbreeding should have happened and then uh, one should perform uh, one should get mul raise multiple um, pups out of this mating inbreeding and then there are several possibilities in that one of it could be that they are homozygous for uh, transgene uh, in the other one homozygous no transgene and the other one is heterozygous if we really want to study the potential of the organism i mean the transgene then we should have identified homozygous transgenic and then further characterized for phenotype and so on okay um I hope you understood uh, the general scheme for at least one of the methods. And the second method is a little more complex, the engineered embryonic stem cell method. OK, so we will go slow. And I think I will uh, conclude this in the next chapter, the next class. So in the embryonic stem cell method, it's much more complex in the sense you take embryonic stem cells and then DNA is inserted into the transfected into the cells and then we should have um, isolated the cells that may have received that is now I can call it as recombinant and non recombinant cells so um, in the previous we have as a part of uh, as a part of our uh, thing we have learned in, in this course we have learned uh, several selection and screening methods right so we should be able to employ those things. So we will make a um, 
transgenic, uh, sorry, we will isolate the recombinant cells. Then we take those cells and put it into a blastocyst. So remember that embryonic stem cells are coming from ICM of some other embryo. One other blastocyst is there. From there, we get the ICM. And now once we are manipulating them in the uh, in vitro, we refer to them as embryonic stem cells. And then manipulation has been done, genetic manipulation, by introducing a transgene. And then we take those recombinant or engineered embryonic stem cells and then put it into a blastocyst and then into an uh, implant into an uterus. So here, the, the situation is a little different, OK? Once we put, the pups will come. The pups are actually chimeric. What is a chimera? Chimera is having two, uh, an individual growing, having um, cells that are derived from two different embryos. Mm. I think I will make use of this space here. Uh, so we'll come to this in a while. Uh, but so I hope you know what are um, non identical twins and identical twins, right? So one egg um, during blastocyst or some other stage, it will, uh, uh, one zygote giving rise to a blastocyst. And during the embryo formation, if it separates into two different individuals, then they are identical twins. What are non-identical twins? There are two eggs, and uh, there are two independent fertilizations. Each of them will grow into an individual. But the only point is they are born at the same time from the same womb. So they are non-identical twins. Can you imagine? Uh, I hope you also have seen that there are cases where you one would find uh, one would find conjoined twins or some abnormal growths like a six limbs and so on. Right? Those are where if there are two eggs, uh, so two embryos like this, okay, and you there are sorry two fertilizations and you have two embryos. What if these two embryos fuse and form into one embryo and give rise to one organism? How many types of ICMs are there? This individual would have ICM, one type of ICM. This is another ICM. Each are derived from independent fertilization events. But because of some abnormality or so, they must, uh, they could fuse up to give rise to one individual. This individual will have uh, some body parts made from, I will call this as ICM, uh, ICM1 and the other one as ICM2. This individual will have some parts derived from ICM1, some body parts derived from ICM2. That person is called as a chimera. OK? Chimeras are not, uh, they are very rare in humans or in, even in animals. They are rare, but they do form. OK? Uh, in all of mythology, a hu whole human um, civilization is uh, kind of obsessed with, uh, with um, chimeras. I, I'm not sure if you. Uh, I think in in there is a co in the course they will say. Um, I think I will I will just take up this and I will just introduce some more terminology so that it will become easier for you to follow in the next uh, class. But there is a nice story uh, which is uh, there is a woman, assume that she is a single mother, and uh, she had a kid. And some uh, some issue has come and eventually through blood testing and other things they found out that this chi the child is no does not genetically belong to her there is no genetic match between this the mother and the 
child. Okay, but every other record, including the hospital record uh, from church where baptism and other things are done, the relatives, everything says that this child in fact belongs to this mother. Even the hospital records show that. But then there was a kind of legal battle uh, between, uh, I think, the government and the individual, probably, that this child is uh, either stolen or something like that. So there were a lot for a long time. I think there was this lady has uh, was determined to pursue this case and what they usually do. How do genetically um, genetic tests are done? They take, uh, say, swabs from the cheek, okay, or maybe blood DNA, DNA from white blood cells, and so on. Cheeks is much more easier. They take cheek cells of mother and father. They take the, uh, sorry, mother and the child here, okay, and then they isolate the DNA and perform uh, um, DNA fingerprinting. That is nothing but a PCR based technique, uh, which uh, which is used in a primer and that primer will have say will give banding patterns okay i think uh, you, you must also learn about rapd and other things so now if i give a situation like this this is mother and this is the child if we see like this, there are some common bands, right? That means they both are related. Usually, uh, the the cases that are with the parenting, parent, and other kinds of disputes, they happen. Uh, they for those kinds, they use molecular techniques like this. And if this is the situation, there are several bands that are matching with that of the mother. So therefore, it is likely that the child belonged to the mother. But if there is a test sample where they are not matching, OK, they also usually use that of the uh, DNA of the mother, uh, father as well. To, so the child usually have has some bands that are similar to that of the mother. Uh, matching through that bands of the mother and some bands matching to that of the father. So based on the banding pattern, they can determine if the child belonged to this particular mother or father. But the test or the scenario that I was telling you here, uh, the child and mother are not matching at all. OK, so that is the problem yeah, in this case. That is why they, they seem to be genetically not so uh, matched up. Instead, so what happened eventually was after a lot of uh, genetic tests and other things, the mother actually happens to be a chimera. Now think of it uh, like this. The somatoplasm or most of the body parts are made, up of, made by a uh, chimera. When I say it means it has two different types of uh, uh, ICM cells derived from two different type two different embryos say a and b if the individual mo is uh, assume that this in the mother is uh, most of the body parts are made up of somatoplasm is made up of a and the germplasm the gametes if the gametes were made from b when this lady ovulates the egg will be of b Right, the somatoplasm, as I was telling you, that the cheek DNA was taken. They are taking the DNA of the cheek and trying to compare it with the child's uh, somatic cells. But the gonads or the gametes of this uh, this woman were made from B type. Okay, so they would never be able to find it out. I think eventually they have done multiple, uh, uh, they have taken different body parts, and then they uh, identified that uh, the this lady is a chimera, and then the, the child was handed over to the mother. But um, they, there are also called as something called as microchimerisms. 
okay uh, one should try to uh, explore these and there is a nice uh, you can also explore i think this lady's name is called as um, um fair child something like that okay i'll post the uh, link for you you can try to read up i only have given you uh, some crude details of it and you can try to read the actual uh, story from there okay i'll put it up here so that uh, you can follow it up so i'll stop here and uh, sorry i have to just introduce uh, this one uh, these terms here and after that i'll stop gain of function loss of function uh, shutdown of expression and um, this is temporal and spatial restricted there are three terms that you will know of is uh, knock in knock in is knock in is you are introducing a transgene into a genome that is called as knock in knock out is you are deleting or inactivating a gene that is already present in the genome that's called as knock out if by some uh, genetic mechanisms say for example one was you introduced a a gene which can when expressed you introduced a gene into this which can suppress the expression of this the gene uh, say xyz then you're you're actually controlling or reducing the expression of another gene right that is those all those kind of mechanisms come under gene knockdown so rnai that is rna interference and so on they are all referred to um, they are they all come under knockdown type okay knock in putting the gene of interest into it knock out is deleting a gene or inactivating a gene knock down is introducing a genetic manipulation another gene to control or uh, shut down the expression of some other genes okay and then there is one more that we need to uh, know of is the spatial and temporal this comes everywhere in science right spatial and temporal um i will just take it a little philosophical if you can think of what is the objective of life is it to say this is space and i will also put the same in in terms of time okay this is little odd but just think of it what is the objective of a species for example is it to occupy all the space or to to live longer to exist longer what do you think will be the um, uh, this is a discussion so you can just probably say that exist longer uh, why do you say that uh, i agree with you by the way why do you want in general if you see the pro propagation is the principle propagation is the object of life you say why propagation propagation can do two things either it can occupy space that is you may have more number of uh, species or individuals of a species within a given space and that will also allow you to exist in uh, longer okay so when you're trying to uh, occupy more space that is about spatial uh, that is about spatial if you're trying to if one is trying to or a, your time your kind um, your kind of counting on time then it is temporal the spatial uh, or the propagation of an individual species uh, to have higher number is also to increase the longer dura uh, to exist in longer time okay so the objective of uh, life to to my understanding right now is that 
for temporal propagation. You want, want the species should exist for a longer uh, time on a, on a time scale. So when we are discussing here in genetic manipulation, there are two things we uh, are in regulation of genes. We need to have two things. One is uh, spatial. Um, so say, for example, I am saying that a gene should be expressed only in the legs, nowhere else. That means I'm talking about a space, right? The space of the leg. If I'm saying that is what one should also know uh, when we are constructing a, uh, a gene, uh, when we make a gene construct for transgenesis, then we should know our objective. Do we want all the cells to express it? Or do you want only a certain type of cell to express it? And if you're talking about a body part or something like that, then it is about, we are talking about space, spatial, right? Then that is spatial, that those are conditional uh, expression. Conditional means, uh, what is opposite to conditional? It would be constitutive. Constitutive is expression, continuous expression. Conditional is expression based on some constraint. The constraints are usually either spatial or temporal. Um, and temporal one comes like something like this. I want the particular gene to be expressed when it is in the blastocyst stage, not before that, not after that. Okay, we are talking about a time from where to where. So that is, those are referred to as temporal. There can also be induced, repressed, and so many other things. They are just, uh, they're not, I think you know those stuff, right? Inducible or repressible or constitutive also come in there. So I hope you understood uh, some parts. In the next class, I would like you to, uh, I want, I, in the beginning of this course, I gave you one assignment uh, which is a review of molecular biology. And in that, I had some questions uh, common for everyone. And they are about uh, homologous recombination and uh, site-specific recombination. So I want you to, again, look at those and come so that we can have a better uh, discussion on it. OK, that is important. Um, otherwise, which otherwise you might uh, not uh, go through the process of what we are trying to learn. OK, any questions? When is the next, um, uh, when is the next assignment deadline for the next assignment?